Christine Nagy, and our guest today is Emily Kinney. We know her best as Beth from The Walking Dead, but she's also a singer-songwriter, and you have some wonderful new music to tell us about. So hi, yeah. Emily. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. It's I'm so good to, to see you. Yes. <laughs> and tell us, how did you get here exactly today? Um, Not oh, meaning through life. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I took the subway from, from, my, from my apartment. And, I just love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is so cool because I'm wondering if it's, if it's easy for you to navigate the subways and to walk around the streets of New York and not pe- people not going, Beth, Beth, oh my God, you're alive, you're okay. Yeah, I mean, I do get, I do get that. I think one thing that's cool about New York City is everybody is so busy and into their their thing um, that it doesn't tend to become too crazy. Plus, you know, I am all bundled up in my yes. winter gear well, right, right now. now. So, um, but I do, I do get. Um, you know, people talk to me and stuff when I'm on the subway and they're like, oh, hey, I love your show, you know, but it's never too overwhelming um, for the most part. Um, yeah, I, you know, just do my thing. And, yeah. Um, people stop and say hello. That's great. So you're so <laughs> nice with your fans. We've uh, producer Jamie and I have gone to a couple of conventions and I've seen how warm and welcoming you are with everybody. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, I think it's so great that you're that interpersonal. Yeah. And, and it's kind of, it's new to me. I haven't seen people do this as much as you guys have been doing this with The Walking Dead and with your music. As an artist, you need an audience. You need someone to listen to the things that you wrote and to watch the TV shows you're making. And um, uh, and so that audience is important. You know, um, they allow me to do what I'm doing. And um, so, you know, when people come to my shows, it makes me feel more motivated to write more songs. And Um, It makes me excited. And when they say they're relating to something I wrote, it makes it seem like it's worthwhile, you know, not just something kind of like silly I'm working on, but something that's important. So, um, so yeah, making sure to thank, thank the fans for giving their time and, and coming to a show is, um, you know, is important to me as much as they thank us for doing this work. uh, You know, I feel like we have to thank them. It's, you know, it's a, it's um, a mutually beneficial relationship, you know, so um so having an audience is a gift. Yeah, definitely. People are re- relating to your album. It's uh, Expired Love, Emily Kinney. Yeah. You're crying on here. Oh. <laughs> so we're worried about you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so did this come from a broken heart or what? what's happening yeah. here? Yeah, well, I mean, I named that collection of songs Expired Love because they were kind of, even if, they're the, if you find happier songs on the album, they're kind of all about relationships or moments in relationships I'm trying to move on past, you know, that I'm trying to get rid of and they've expired. Their their time is over. So even though there's some there's definitely some like happy memories and happy songs, I think that I wrote those songs in order to to sort of move on. And um, you know, I felt like there's something if you listen to the songs, a lot of them do sound They have, you know, I use a lot of glockenspiel. I use a lot of fun instruments that maybe make them sound happier and fun, but they do come from a part of my, uh, a part of me that's, that's more um, dealing with heartache, Mm -hmm. you know? And so um, I feel like I put, I wanted the picture to be sort of a reminder of what they, what they came from, even though some of them are are happier. No, absolutely. And, um, I think you've got a gift as an artist that you're able to just, you go through heartache and you Mm -hmm. can express that and you can put it out there and other people relate to it. They know that they're not alone in those feelings. I mean, what a great way to move on. Let me write this in a song and play it out and sing it. So is it hard for you when you're performing then to kind of go back to that place, a place of heartache and do it or are you okay with it? Yeah, I'm okay with them changing. You know, sometimes I sing a song and it almost takes on a new meaning, and I think that's what's cool about making making stuff. You know, I, I write a song, and someone else might interpret it completely differently, but it might still be very important to them. And for me, um, one thing that keeps these songs fresh, even if I've performed them for a while, is, is the fact that they do start to almost take on a new life, you know, um... And like one song, for instance, is is the the title track "Expired Lover." I feel like that song has had different arrangements, and now it's become a song that's sort of I find people laughing in the audience, listening to the lyrics, and it's become very like fun. And um, there's a moment where I sing, "Oh, oh, 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 oh," you know, it's very almost kind of silly, and um, I love performing it in sort of a joyful way 
rather than performing it in a more sad way, which is when I first wrote it, I, you know, it was, it was a slower song. It was just me on guitar. And um, it's fun to, to switch it up. I think that's what's cool is, uh, you know, the interpretation of a song. When did you learn to do all this? So you play guitar, uh, <laughs> you write your own music. When did yeah. this start for you? I've been singing and doing music since I was really little, like probably five, six, seven, you know, performing and stuff. Um, I've always loved writing. Um, it wasn't always in the form of songs, maybe more like poems and short stories. Um, and But music has always been something that I've gravitated towards as far as like, you know, I I learned piano when I was younger. Guitar is not something that has come easy for me. It's something that I definitely like taught myself because I felt like as a songwriter I needed to know it, you know. And I wouldn't say that um, necessarily being a musician, like a um, an instrumental musician, is something that comes necessarily super easy to me, but I do feel like I love writing the parts, you know. You're coming from a hit series. I know you've got projects on the way, which we'll touch upon. Yeah. And you've got an album released, and you're going around and you're performing, and you're getting great response from the audience. Are you really happy with how things are going? I'm um, I'm super happy. I'm enjoying myself, like, day to day, working on working on music and, and acting and cool TV shows. But um, I feel like it's still, you know, growing and... Um, I'm I'm looking forward to, you know, my next album, which will be called This Is War, and, like, seeing where that goes and what audience that reaches. And we get that, isn't it in April? It'll be May, actually. May? It won't okay. be until May. Um, I might release a single before May, um, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. You just, you know, <laughs> yeah, clue yeah. us in. Let us know. Oh, we'll yeah, follow. of course. Tell us about the song, Julie. Is, oh. <laughs> is Julie a real girl? <laughs> um, Julie is based on a true story. And, um, yeah, she's a real, she's a real girl that I don't know well, but I know her boyfriend well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was a song that I wrote after a night I went to Rockwood Music Hall. That's one of my favorite places to hang out and see music. And, um, I'd seen this guy that we had had this sort of on and off flirtation for a while. And, um, I was finally single and I hung out with him that night and he's like, oh, guess what? I have a girlfriend now. So I felt like I sort of, you know, um, I was I was disappointed. So, oh, yeah. So I think it was that night or the day after I wrote that song. And <laughs> it was kind of a fun way to, you know, like I kind of make this joke of this big campaign and stuff. But it was more just like, you know, in the moment, it was kind of like a fun way of being like, hey, wait a minute. I thought we were going to try to, you know, date or we were going to try to make something happen. But um, But, you know, you never know. I think that everyone has you know, people like that in their life that they're like, oh, if only this would happen. Uh -huh. Or even if it's not the fact that they're dating somebody else, but there's some circumstance. Oh, there's something in keeping, timing. Yeah. yeah, in timing. And, you know, this was totally a timing thing, I feel like, where um, where we just never really quite got to, like, ex like, see if we would be a good match. But I feel like so many people can relate to that that feeling of, like, hey, wait a minute, I thought... Uh. And um, so I love performing that song at shows, and I love including the audience and, um, you know, it's one of my favorite songs to sing. I'm not necessarily, like, truly in life hung up on this <laughs> person. With a, you know, I've definitely moved on. Uh -huh. <laughs> it also seems like you're completely in love with New York. You came from Nebraska to New York. You didn't choose L.A. to pursue the acting career. Yeah. I really liked the idea of moving to L.A. I can remember in high school, you know, sort of thinking about that as a possibility. But something about New York felt like I could grab onto it a little more like I knew about backstage at the time and I knew that I could go to open calls and I knew a couple people that had moved to New York you know and it felt like something I could sort of um wrap my head around about how I would go about pursuing something that was such a mystery like you know no one in my family is an actor or a musician or you know in the business and um some for some reason L.A. felt a little more um, of a mystery, like isolated, to, or ice, you know, to me. So, I mean, it was mostly out of just that, okay, well, I, can, I know I can go to open calls, like for theater. That's great. If I go to New York. So that's like a place to start. I would say the first year I, I didn't necessarily love New York City. I remember being like, oh, man, this, why does everything have to be so much more difficult? Like getting your groceries and all the subways. It was <laughs> yeah. confusing. And, you know, um, and space. Um, 
But as time went on, I, f- I found that it actually suited me very well. And um, I could sort of, it inspired me a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, the way that you have to be around people all the time. And you can sort of be around people, but also be by yourself. Oh, and yeah. I find that to be a very inspiring environment because you can observe and write and things, but also, and not feel lonely, but yet have space to yourself, which has always been really important to me. So what neighborhood did you come to first when you first came to New um, York City? Oh, actually, first I did study at NYU for a semester. Um, they had this program that I was really lucky to get into. I've lived in a few places. The Water Street, so down in the financial district. I know it well. <laughs> yeah. And then I lived in a tiny, my very first theater job I, I got. I lived with two girls in a tiny studio. That sounds crazy, but if you're coming from dorms, I guess it felt okay. <laughs> In, in on Mid- Midtown East, East Midtown. And then uh, and then when I really moved, I guess, when you could say I like, you know, I went back to Nebraska for like a second because I was totally broke. And I, um, w- when I really moved, I moved to Brooklyn. And I found um, an apartment and a few blocks away, I found a coffee shop to work at. <laughs> and a few blocks away from there, I found, you know, a um, place where I could get pizza if I bought a beer and (laughs) and a few blocks from there I found you know bingo night and a few blocks so I found like a little neighborhood yeah you know and um I knew everyone because I worked at the coffee shop that was the only coffee shop at the time in that those few blocks Mm. so um that became my home for a while just for a moment you had to go back to Nebraska because it sounds like you hit tougher times how did you keep your spirits up and your belief in your career when Things weren't going as well, and you did have to move back home. I mean, I was really confused about what to do next. I had gotten into one show, which was really lucky, from going to open calls and stuff. And then the show closed, but I didn't really know how to proceed. I really didn't have much of a job. I didn't really want to keep living in a studio with two other girls. I, you know, really didn't have any money at all. And um, I actually felt like going to Nebraska, I felt very motivated because it was like, oh, my goal is to get back here. Mm. So now I know, okay, I want to save this much money. I want to finish this many credits of my degree. I want to, you know what I, like, so I went back and I would say I had, I loved that time in Nebraska because I knew this is my time to really, and I was actually like in a play while I was back and I, I, it was my time to really get ready. And I worked every morning at this, um, a, a different, I'm, I always end up working at coffee shops, I guess, because I, we know, love feeds coffee. my caffeine addiction. <laughs> yeah. And then I get my coffee for free. And yes. it's like, it's like, there's the perk. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, you know, just worked every morning and <laughs> saved. I mean, at the time I thought it was a lot of money. I think I saved a thousand dollars, but I was like, yes, going back to New York and that City. that got you back. <laughs> that got me. I mean, it was enough to get yeah. my, you know, I, I had, I was like saved enough for like my, my plane and then, yeah, to get me back. It was enough to get me back. I mean, it's a great inspiring story because instead of being discouraged, you used it like, no, I'll show you. I'm coming back New York and I'm going to do this. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can be very impossible to save money here. So if you know that that's part of your issue, you know, is not is not being able to mm-hmm. to pay for everything. Uh, why not go to, to some place where the cost of living is like zero? I mean, n- Nebraska, the cost of living is so so low compared to some place like this that you're able to, or you could, you know, be able to save. So, how did Walking Dead come to you? Did you audition for it here in New York? Yes, I auditioned for it. Yeah, here in New York, I just had a couple different auditions, and and it, there must have been Georgia. some level you reached where you could get an audition. Like The Walking Dead, was it um, yeah. finally landing an agent, or what made the difference there? Before Walking Dead, I had worked, you know, f- pretty steadily for f- quite a few years. I mean, I had already been in New York, I mean, four or five years before I got Walking Dead. I worked um, on two Broadway shows, um, Spring Awakening and then August Osage County. That all took, you know, it took it took time. There was a path leading up to it, because I think sometimes... Yeah. We'll look at someone with your career and go, wow, she came out of nowhere and bam, she landed on this great show. But you worked for it. Now I look and I go, especially the last couple of years, I'm like, oh, my God, this was such like a, you know, a break for me mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. But when I first started working on the show, I didn't see it that way. I saw it as another my next gig. You know, I, right. I wasn't like, this is the thing. You know? 
I saw more like Spring Awakening as like a big break for me because it was like, oh my God, I'm going to be on in a yes. Broadway show. <laughs> and, you know, um, now, of course, I see, I, I also didn't know when I got Walking Dead that it would become four years of my life, mm-hmm. which then that defines you in a certain way that I, you know, didn't realize what happened. So how is life for you post Beth? I, I know it's hard for the fans. Yeah. <laughs> for the Walking Dead fans. How about for you? Actually, um, it's been very busy. And even though I haven't been in Georgia working on the show, Walking Dead is still so much a part of my life. I mean, I still, I, I love going to the conventions. I see a lot of my friends from Walking Dead when I can. Um, you know, that's how people recognize me. Like, like we were talking earlier, you know, people see me on the street and they say, Beth, you know, <laughs> and they want to talk about the show. Uh-huh. Um, so it's still very much a part of my daily life and like interaction with people. Um, but, um, since the show, you know, I've been working on new projects, which is really exciting. It's almost been busier in a certain way, just because, you know, for me, Walking Dead was such an anchor. It was such a like, my schedule is based on, you know, when they need me there. And um, now it's sort of like, well, I can do anything. And so then I'm trying to do everything. <laughs> it sounds like it. It's, so yeah. so um, it's actually been pretty, pretty crazy. And now the, the freedom to do music shows, it's like, mm-hmm. well, I'm taking advantage of that. So I end up oh, traveling a lot. Definitely. You're up for a Saturn Award. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Best Supporting Actress. Up against Melissa McBride, though. I know. <laughs> so one of your co-workers, who plays Carol on The Walking Dead, um, yeah. do you guys just root each other on and like, no, of you should course. win, you should win. <laughs> no, I mean, Melissa should win. She's like my teacher. She's like, like she's I can't tell you how yeah. many, I can't tell you how many auditions she's helped me with. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, it's awesome that we're both in that category. That means one of the Walking Dead people better win, you know? <laughs> so I don't really, I'm just excited to be nominated. Like I've never been nominated for an award before. That's crazy to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is great. So are you, so, are you getting used to I all I feel this? like I've already won. I was like, I was nominated for something like with a lot of other like like really great people. like really amazing yes. actors so. <laughs> and so are you getting used to all the red carpet stuff too and having to get dressed up have you found your style all those yeah. sort of things you know what's surprising that I never thought of in the last couple of years now that I've gotten to do more of this kind of you know events and red carpet stuff and even press type things I didn't realize how time consuming that is you know you think of acting and you think of just like the or writing a song and um, the time and the work that you put into just making the thing, you know, being on set or with music, writing the song, recording it, putting together the package, all of that. Um, But then this other part of it that is the events and dressing up, and it's really fun, but it's actually, like, very time-consuming. Like, it can really, you know, um, I, I that was something I didn't, I didn't, anticipate I guess or think about too much I think it's before. actually um, it's really it's fun though I mean I'm not it's it's really fun yeah but there's a, you know the spotlight is on you definitely and people really pick apart you know hair makeup style yeah shoes everything so I think there's a bit of pressure involved with it as fun as it is yeah you do want to like represent yourself well um you realize that if you do represent yourself well it can be especially for someone like like me who has another you know projects um, in the works, you know, I feel like with acting, you can always go to auditions and do your thing and and be and be picked for a part, regardless of sort of like the the press surrounding you. You know, you can do your work. But with music, you're the one creating the project, and you need fans to know about your music. So you need press, and you need you know you there is social media, but um, outside of that, you know. Like so these events can really be helpful to people just knowing that your music exists and then going to check it out. Um so so for me being an independent artist, not having a label, not having really much radio play, like these events do become great opportunities for me and so I do want to represent myself well and and get chances to let people know that you know I have music coming out and if they think my dress is cool, that's awesome right. too. You know what I mean? Like, like maybe for some reason, if I wear a cool dress, they'll yes. also think, well, her music must be cool. Yes, so. no, because well, your you look, know, your look defines it, you. It does. You know? it, do, it does in some ways. It's become less important for me to make sure that I look perfect all the time because it's something you just can't control. And um, sometimes, no matter what, you're gonna have pictures where, like, you know, your face is like 
<laughs> not uh, right. And kind of think they almost go for that on purpose sometimes. It, it, <laughs> yeah, and and it's just like. I mean, you should just wear what you want to wear. Like, be yourself. I just want to touch upon a couple of TV shows coming up here. Yeah. Um, that you're going to squeeze in somewhere between your music and your yeah. award ceremonies. <laughs> <laughs> and so tell us about them. I'm going to start working on this show called The Flash. Um, well, actually, I already filmed it, and that's going to be really fun. I play a villain, so that's very different than Beth. Y- um, totally different. The computer different. hacker villain. Uh-huh. And I've started working on the second season of The Nick, and that's going to be you know, really fun and exciting. and um, That's on Cinemax? That's on Cinemax, and I think it's on HBO Go, too. But, um, yeah, so I don't think that will air for quite a while, but, I'm, but I've, I have started filming that. Um, it films in New York, which is great, because then I can just take the subway. <laughs> there we go, on the subways again. Yes. Yeah, I love the subway. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, I mean, thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to come see us. And yeah. So I have expired love. Emily Kinney, but your new album is coming out in May. Yes, new album is This Is War, and I'm going to have so many more updates coming up. Like, just, I mean, now it's only like a couple months away for the release, so we're really starting to amp up information. So you can go to my Instagram, which I love, is at Emmy Kinney, E M M Y K I N N E Y, and my Twitter is the same, or emilykinneymusic.com. Get all the information there. Find out yeah. about upcoming shows because you can go see Emily and she'll. She'll hang out and meet you, which is, (laughs) it's really, really nice of you to do that. So thank you, Emily Kinney. Thanks so much.